this morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Man, it's good to see everybody in the house of the Lord today. Uh, I'm so glad that you uh, decided to come and worship with us today here at Albany Family Worship Center. I'd like to welcome everyone that's joining us from home by the internet. Uh, thank you for allowing us to share this time of praise and worship and fellowship together as we celebrate our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we'll begin our service this morning. Father, as we come into your presence, uh, Father God, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand this morning, and we ask you to forgive us where we failed you, Lord God. Forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us now, Father, that we can stand before you above reproach to ask for your mercy and grace. And Father, we ask that you let the Holy Ghost, God the Holy Ghost, be in control of all things here today. Let him move upon our hearts and our minds. Let him give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive what you have in store for us this day. Let his anointing flow upon us all today, Father God. And Lord, we want to thank you for everything you do for us, every blessing, every provision, all the health and healing, Lord God. We know that it is of you, from you, and by you. And God, you know the needs of every person in this sanctuary this morning. You know the needs of all of those that are joining us from home, Lord God. You've heard their prayers. You've heard their cries from the prayer closet. And we ask you to send down the miracle they've been praying for. Send down the answer to their prayers this morning. And God, we want to lift up these people that's on our prayer list today and give you glory uh, for their healing and for their salvation today and for their deliverance. God, we especially give you glory uh, for Twyla Haynes today, Lord God, for touching her body and, and beginning that healing process uh, as she has gone home from the hospital, Lord. We pray for Helen Blank Bentley, Jewel Nichols, Shane Busby and his family in Mount Horror Baptist Church, Paula Harden, Pastor Kevin Couch and family, and Trinity Baptist Church, Lacey, Robbie, and Addie, AJ and Emily, Mandy, Bubba, Desi, and Bryson, Brad, Haley, and Tucker, Tommy and Connie, Moose, Devin, Dylan, Buddy, uh, George and Martha, Susan and Thomas Page, uh, Sean, Lewis, James, and Annie Presley. God, we especially pray this morning for our Carroll County uh, Correctional Institute uh, prison ministry, Lord God. We pray that you would just continue to pour your spirit out there in that place today. Dorothy Hill, Nancy Russell, Papa John Russell, Christian Covenant Academy staff, student, family, Doug and Jackie Busby, Pastor Donald Stroud and Wendy, Pastors A.B. and Carol Stroud, Rex Adams Jr. We pray that repentance and the fire of Holy Ghost revival would fall upon this great nation we live in. Pastor Fred and Gigi Blouser, Willnette Taylor, Teresa Cook, Isaiah Southwell, Tommy Wingate, Brad and Cheryl, Pastor Jeff Henry and his family, and Sasha Baptist Church, Austin Selman, Terry Whitten, John Allen, uh, Connie Carnes and family, Rick and Mary, Barbara Datcher, Lena Lopez and Josh James Mercer, Gilbert and Clary Douglas, Samantha and Tim Varner, the Strength family, Bo Kimsey, Autumn pa uh, Parsons, uh, Aaron Fritt, Justin Short, uh, Betty and Tommy, Gracie, J.D. and Leslie, Charles Grizzle, the Butler family, the Kitchen family, Tom Baker, uh, Vicki Watt, Brianna McKenzie and family, Lisa Cornway and family, Brenda Grant and Siobhan, uh, Patel. Lord God, thank you for what you're about to do in these people's lives, Lord God. The healed, the sick, and the afflicted, the call to the lost, and they hear your voice and receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The reconciliation and restoration of those that have fallen and backslidden away from you, Lord God. And sending down the fire of Holy Ghost revival in your church, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, we believe, and we receive, and we say, we 
Love you, Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise, John. You and Daddy Bug. Where Daddy Bug at? Y'all come on up here. Praise God. And let's sing a little praise to Jesus this morning. Y'all just pray that Pastor can keep up with John all morning as he plays. Amen. Yeah. He got him a new man. It's got everything on it, man. It took all I could do to keep him from putting them effects in the sanctuary this morning. <laughs> he, had, he, had, he had reverb and delay and quiver and, and you name it, it's on there. Amen. <laughs> and I think you can get online and download both. Oh, it's 
survives as we got in the house this morning. Oh, praise God. Everybody ought to be able to raise their hand up on that. I mean, praise the Lord. We've survived. Amen. Uh, we we should have died. I know I should have. Uh, everything I've ever done in my life, all the, all the uh, uh, medications I've taken, all the alcohol I've drank, all the places I've been, uh, I should have died. But I survived. And there's only one reason. Because God had a plan and a purpose for my life. And if you're here this morning, if you're under the sound of my voice today, you're surviving. And God's got a plan and a purpose for your life. And you need to let go. And you need to let God change your life the way He wants. start, let's just uh, go to God in prayer and just take a breath in His presence. Lord God, we come to you in prayer, Father. <coughs> Lord, I 
just ask that you would please help us all to be accepting of your Holy Spirit. Please help us to be receptive of your Holy Spirit, Lord God. Please, Lord God, come in and soften our hearts right now. And, and please, Lord God, just help us to do your will and not our own, Lord God. And thank you for this time together. And we thank you for all of our many, many blessings, Lord. And I just ask that you would please help us to enjoy time in your presence. And please help us to just be surrendered to you, Lord God. And whatever that entails, Lord, I ask that you would please... Help us in our mission fields daily, Lord God, whatever it is that you have us do. Please help us to remember that it, it's not always about turning thousands of people to, to you, Lord God. It's, sometimes it's just about the one, Lord God. Sometimes it's, it's, Ooh, come it's, on now. it's just about telling someone you love them, Lord. Yeah. Sometimes it's, it's just small mission work, Lord yeah, God. God. And we thank you that you bless us with an opportunity each and every day and I just yes, ask God. that you would please help us to seize those opportunities in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray yes, Amen. Amen. Amen The title of this is titled The Simple Truth Matthew chapter 22 verse 37 through 40 Jesus said to him You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Yes. We need to follow this and focus on loving the Lord our God and our neighbor in that order. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, uh, AJ was right on target this morning. I spoke of should be on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when you love the Lord more than you love yourself, when you love the Lord more than you love your family, when you love the Lord more than you do the things of the flesh and the things of the world, you can focus on Him and you can give Him glory. Amen? And that's what it's about, is loving the Lord with all your heart all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. Because you know what? He loves you enough to go to that cross. He loves you enough to suffer the anguish of Calvary for you. And it's like AJ said, it's, it's, it's not about it's about you. It's about the one. <laughs> the Bible says there's rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that comes to know Jesus Christ as their Lord. You hear what I'm saying to you? Just make a difference in one's life. Everybody hold up the friend like this right here. Just say one. That's all it takes. Is one. If you reach the one, next week there will be twice as many as you. And then if they go out and reach one, there will be three times as many the next week. And that's all it takes. That's all it takes. And sometimes it's just as simple. Jesus loves you. Moose, I'm gonna ask you to come up here before I get before I get too far into this. And I want you to take up time and offer this morning. Go ahead and pray with us. Lord Jesus, we thank you for being here gathered in your house. Lord, we thank you for the time we spent together Friday night. 
And we just ask you to touch our hearts with the message and bless these tithes and offerings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, every time we play this song, it reminds me of me. Every time we play this song, it reminds me of me. It reminds me of where I've come from. And, and, and if we sing this song this morning, I, I hope it reminds you of where you've been. Because when we realize where we've been and where we're at today, we'll rejoice. You see, he could have left us. He could have left us. Right where we were at. He was under no obligation to save us. He was under no obligation to pick us up out of that pit we were in. But you know what? He did. Because of one reason. He loved you. I don't know about y'all, but I remember coming to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. My life was falling to pieces. <laughs> I had nowhere to turn. It was blocked on the left and the right, the front and the back. And there was only one place for me to go. At him. And Nathan, he reached down in that old miry pit. And he took me by the hand. And he picked me up. He cleaned me up and set my feet on a solid rock. Now it ain't been easy. It's still a struggle that. Am I talking to somebody this one? Either amen or oh me. That's the name of this song this morning. It's the struggle.
God. I'm so glad today that God found me where he did and brought me out <laughs> and set my feet on the solid rock. And you know what? <clears throat> We've been called to the table of God. The day that you were saved, I remember being a wee one out playing. See, back when I come up, we, we didn't play in the house. As soon as you got up and got dressed and ate a little breakfast, you got shooed out the door.
The problem then with the world is not only sin, but it's you and me. Because I is the center of sin. Look at your neighbor and say he's talking about me. I'm talking about everybody this morning. Can't nobody say I'm picking on them because I'm not. I is the center of sin. We're at the center of sin. Do you understand what I'm saying to you this morning? And it started a long time ago. Let's, let's read. Let's read Romans 5, verse 12. And then we'll talk about this topic a little bit more. Romans 5, 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, listen now, for that all have sinned. So saith the word of God this morning. Father, bless the reading of the word today. Father, use this living and powerful word to impact our lives, to change us and to mold us and to make us into the people that you want us to be. Holy Ghost, come now. Use this living word of God to encourage us, to draw us ever closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to empower us to go from this place, to walk by faith and not by sight, to embolden us, to go forth and proclaim the name of Jesus to this lost and dying world. And we're going to be sure to give you all the glory. And Father, as I come before you right now, <coughs> Lord, as I humble myself under your mighty hand, I ask you to take control of me. Father, I ask that you let your words be my words, your thoughts my thoughts, your love in my heart, Jesus. That it flows out and touches everyone the sound of my voice. And in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we pray, we believe, and we receive, and we say, we love you, Jesus. Amen, and amen, and amen. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise this morning. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm froggy. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, we always got an excuse. We're always trying to blame other people for our problems and for our troubles. We try to blame, blame everything that's going on in the world from, to, from global warning, warning to political differences. But, but I beg to differ this morning. The problem is sin. The problem is us. The problem is the flesh. And it all started back in the Garden of Eden. When God formed man from the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he placed him in, in the garden uh, east of Eden and told him to tend and keep it, and he brought forth from the ground, he brought forth from the dirt all manner of animals. And as he paraded him in front of man, who he had named Adam, by the way, he began to name each and every animal. But out of all the animals, there was not found a helpmate suitable for Adam. So God told the deep sleep to go upon Adam. And he removed from Adam uh, the Bible says a rib in, in the Hebrew, that is, he took part of his side and he created woman. <laughs> now that's very interesting to me. Because if he had took it from the head, it would have meant that she'd always been over her husband. If he had took it from her feet, she'd have always been under his feet, under his, under his rule. But as it is, he took it from Adam's side, which means man and woman is supposed to walk hand in hand, side by side, through this world. Well, he made a helpmate suitable 
for Adam, and Adam named her Eve. And they were they were living in that garden. In that garden, they had everything they needed. God had supplied everything they needed. They could eat of anything they wanted to. They could go anywhere they wanted to go. They could do whatever they wanted to do. But God had one, one, one. Somebody say one. Stipulation. He called Adam before him. He looked at Adam and he said, do not eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For in that day, you'll surely die. And that's a very interesting statement coming from God. Coming from an eternal being. See, when he originally made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, by the way, but Adam and Eve, man and woman, when he originally made them, the original model was made to last for all eternity. Because you something that, that, that death comes upon, why if he was already going to die? It was made to last forever. That's the way God made them. Because when God creates something, God does create it to the best. Amen? But he told Adam, he said, Adam, don't eat of that tree. Because in that day that you eat of it, you're going to die. Well, enter in the serpent. Enter in Satan. Enter in the devil. Enter in that tempter, that trickster. And he began to manipulate Eve. See, see, Adam had a responsibility. God, I want you to hear me today. We have a responsibility. God has charged us with keeping and tending those things he's given us. To watch over them and keep them safe. And that's what Adam's charge was. He had spoke to Adam and give Adam that command. Don't eat of that tree. Don't, don't do it, Adam. And Adam was supposed to, uh, he was supposed to pass it on to Eve. And he was supposed to be paying attention. But he, he, he fell short because he allowed the serpent began to manipulate his wife. And that serpent asked Eve, did God really say that you couldn't eat of that tree? Did God say that you couldn't eat? She said, no, God told us that we could have anything we want. We could eat of everything that's in this garden, but we need to stay away from that tree. Because in the day we eat of it, the day we touch it, See, she adds a little bit to the commandment. No serpent, being the trickster that he was, he said, oh, when you eat of that tree, you're not going to die. God knows that in the day that you eat of that tree, you're going to become as wise as he. You're going to know Everything that God does, you're going to be like a God. And she looked at that tree, and she saw that it was good to, it was good to look at, that it was good to eat. And she partook it, she partook it. And she took it to her husband. Now, 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 Adam was the one that was standing in front of God when God said, don't do it. He knew better. But God himself had spoken to it. Adam knew better. But when Eve walked up to him and she said, Here, eat this. Adam said, Okay. And he partook. And 
both of eyes were open, and they understood what it was to sin against God. See, it wasn't the fruit that was the sin. It was the disobedience to God's will. It was in disobedience to the Word of God. It was in, because they failed to the temptation and the wiles of the enemy. Where instead of looking at God, instead of focusing on God, instead of listening to the voice of God, they listened to the voice of the tempter. Am I talking to anybody here? Do you hear the tempter this morning? Do you hear him telling you, oh, go ahead. It'll be all right. What's the matter with it? Everybody else is doing it. Go ahead. It'll be okay. Well, guess what? It won't be okay. Because God's already spoken to you and said, don't. And that's what's wrong with the world. When Adam failed, sin entered into this world. The seed of rebellion was released. The seed of rebellion come forth. And since the time of Adam, that seed of rebellion, that seed of disobedience, that seed of hard-headedness, that seed of stubbornness has been passed on from generation to generation down to the day. And I got news for you today. That's what's wrong with the world today. See, rebellion, wanting to do things our way and not God's way. Thinking we're smarter than God. Thinking we know better than God. You know why most of us don't, 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 are not healed when we pray for healing? Because we're in rebellion. There's something in our life, some, some little something that God wants us to cast aside. Look at And God just doesn't want us to come before him and say, I'm sorry. No, God wants us to cut it out. When you plant a garden, whether it be vegetables or be flowers, when you plant a garden, if you're not careful, weeds spring up. And if those weeds are not taken care of, they'll choke out whatever you plant. And there's only one way to get rid of a weed. you got to kill it. There's only one way to, to stop them from, from, uh, from affecting the whole garden. And you've got to go and you've got to physically pull those things up. You've got you to gotta get them out of the dirt. You've got to expose the root problem. See, because the problem ain't what's above ground. The problem is what's below ground. Hello? You can cut off what's above the ground, and guess what? It still comes back. When we come before God to confess our sins, we just don't say, I'm sorry, and go, and, and go about our business. No, we have to crucify We have to tear out that seed of rebellion out of our hearts. We gotta cast, we gotta expose it to the open air. We gotta expose it to God. Am I talking to somebody this morning? Say amen. amen. And then and only then can it be done away with. Because sins entered this world. And death by sin. And it's been passed upon all men, for all have sinned. The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. For we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now I know this, I know this is not a shouting sermon this morning. I, I didn't expect it to be. I expected for some people to take offense with it. Get mad. Why are you preaching on sin? I'm saved. I'm blood-bought and born again. You ain't perfect. And 
and you won't be till you stand before the Lord. Each and every one of us in here has something that we need to we need to uproot in our life. Am I talking to anybody this morning besides myself? Say amen. Sin's the problem. Sin's the problem is the problem in all the world. In this country, across the ocean, in the Middle East, sin is the problem. <coughs> but there's a cure to that. There's a cure for sin. And his name is Jesus. <coughs> Only Jesus can take away the sins of the world. Only Jesus can wash us white as snow. He says in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 18, he said, come now and let us reason together. Even though your sins be as scarlet, be red as blood, may it mark you as get. Oh, somebody, hear me this morning. Marks you as guilty, destined for hell, death, and in the grave. Even though your sins be a scar. He said, I'll make them white as snow. He'll clean you up, wash you off, set your feet on a solid rock, write your name in the Lamb Book of Life. Make but give you a ticket for the kingdom of heaven. Amen. It's all about Jesus. And you're not going to find it through food. You're not going to find it through confusion. You're not going to find it through works. You're not going to find it through good deeds. There's only one way to find what you need today. And that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. He has what you need. Whatever it may be. He can change your life forever. The scriptures, Jesus said in the scriptures, He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one. Somebody hold up the hand and say, one way. Jesus is the only one. And if you come through that door, if you knock, it's going to be open. If you seek him, you'll find him. Because Jesus wants you to be forgiven. Do, do you understand? I used to think before you come to Jesus, you had to go get everything straightened out. Hello? You had to do it. No. Jesus is coming to you all. Hello? Jesus is coming to you all. I'll change your life. I'll give you everything you need to be a child of God. I'll give you the whole armor of God so you can stand against the wiles of the devil. Woo! That ought to make somebody shout this morning. He's got everything we need. The only thing you got to do is like AJ said this morning. Focus on 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. And you do that? Hello, my people. When you do that, everything else in your life begins to fall into place. I don't know about y'all, I can remember how chaotic my life was. Can somebody testify to that this morning? Oh, it was, it was a turmoil. But when Jesus stepped in, he cleaned it up, swept it out, set everything straight. He took me by the hand. When you put all your trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, when, when, when you crucify the flesh with the sins thereof, when you crucify, when you snatch up that seed of rebellion that's keeping you away from the cross, By the way, in the word faith, I am the center of faith. Only you, only you can trust in Jesus for your salvation. Just like I am the center of sin, I am the center of faith. And when you put aside your stubbornness, got no stubborn people in here this morning, dude. Come on. Somebody, somebody talk to me now. Come on. We got any prideful people in here this morning? Come on. Talk to the preacher this morning. Amen. There's a lot of you could have raised your hands on both of them because I'm going to... No, I ain't going to look at nobody. I look at everybody and say, pick it on me. Here's my thing, if the shoe fits, you wear it. Amen? I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't picking on you specifically, but if the shoe fits, wear it, honey. But when we're willing to crucify the flesh, get away from those things that separated us from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Get away from that sin and embrace his righteousness by faith in him and we'll be saved by grace through faith and that not of ourselves it is the gift of God I love what verse 18 of Romans 5 says therefore as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to come in nature even so, by the righteousness of one. There's that word again. Somebody hold up your hand and say, one. And that one is Jesus. By the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men to the justification of life. Anybody can get saved. Anybody can come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. His sacrifice on the cross was for the entire world. But few will accept the free gift. See, we got to make a choice. We got to choose life or death. Salvation. Jesus or him. And it all boils down to this. One. One way. One Savior. One Jesus. By the righteousness 
Oh, Woo! Somebody ought to be shouting right now about the righteousness of one. The free gift came upon all men to the justification of life. You got to choose. Salvation by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to make that choice. Some of you are struggling with a seed of rebellion. John, who will we be grateful for you? Did you hear what I just said? Some of you have got a seed of rebellion planted in your life. And it's trying to work its way to the surface. You keep cutting off what comes up, but the seed still left. The roots are still left. You gotta root it up. You gotta crucify it. He said, if anyone wished to come after me, he's got to crucify his flesh daily. <coughs> then you know. Will you crucify that flesh? Will you crucify that seed of rebellion? Will you tear it out by the root? and lay it at the foot of the cross and let Jesus take care of it. I don't care what it is. <laughs> I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm just saying there's something you got to dig up. There's something needs exposing to Jesus this morning so he can deal with it. And it's your choice. The one or the other. I choose the one. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And you know, God's been good to me. I got a godly wife, even though she aggravates me most of the time. Got a son that's on fire for the Lord. Got a grandson that's walking in a car. I got a grandbaby. Gotta get up here and just sing her heart out. Got a son in law that loves the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm blessed. As for me and my house, we're gonna serve. you choose. Are you serving the Lord? Are you letting God have control of all things in your life? It's up to you. Oh, 
Thank you. 